Uh, from NASA Great Lakes, I am going to help my friend Brian Bolander, who is a Wicked Racer, uh, through some uh, introductory data acquisition. And I thought I'd take this time to show other people what's going on. Um, get this Track Attack software. It is just fantastic for what we're doing. You can share all kind of data. I'm going to show you what that looks like later. And uh, I will be ha happy to help you analyze it, but under two conditions. Number one, you get a free account, and number two, you upload your data, which is quite easy, to be honest with you. You don't even, know to, don't even uh, I don't think you even need to download the software to do it, but you need to download the software to analyze it, which looks like this right here, this uh, white rhino. So we're going to do this. I'm going to close everything up. I'm going to close everything up and kind of walk you through it here. Um... You import your data right here. Um, put in an SD card right wherever you have it. It's in an email and it's saved. And there's data right here. And this thing is all synced. So I'm going to sync it again. And basically, any of the data that I've uploaded, it is synced and it's already synced onto this website in the cloud. And as an example, there's seven laps at Autobahn, right? And Adam Roberts ran this uh, in Dan Capaldo's car. And here's his, some of his information. It's a little bit generic information, but the most part is it's there. And here's what you do with it. You go to the software, you freaking open this stuff up, and you say, give me all of Brian Bolander's data that's on the cloud or Adam Roberts, or Dan Capaldo's, or Nick Owens, or Travis Lee's, right? Give me all of those for Brian, and I want to upload them. Remember, they're on the cloud, and they're being backed up, right? So that is a snapshot. It's not live and dynamic. So we're just changing files and storing them there, which is, you need that place. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, Brian's stuff real quick, and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on this. These are the four sessions. Uh, for Brian, and I'm going to look on here. I already know he ran a 37 something and change. There's no 37s right here. It may have been wet weather, it may have been uh, who knows what, but we're going to get rid of this session because all we want to do right now is look at some Zinger laps and do a big, huge compare. I just want to know. Let's get rid of that one too. It's a 38. So of the four sessions so far, we've saved two. And here's a whole bunch of 37s. A 37.2, a 37.5, let's pick that. Another 37.5. And up here, it's a 37.2 and 37.4. That's enough. So what do, what do we just do? We took four outings that my, Brian sent us from two different Mid-Ohio events. And... Um, we got rid of two of them because they weren't really fast, and we picked two sessions that had some amazingly fast. 37, there's three, there's two tenths there. Um, these are within three tenths, and they're graphically illustrated on this right here. I'm going to shrink this down to make it look less intimidating. Um, track Attack software, get it, it's awesome. Um, has a bunch of neat features. All just really kind of fun stuff. Split times, graph. All right, so let's just look at this real quick. 30,000 foot level. Our fastest lap in this case is a 137.275, right? All these five laps. And what you're seeing right here are the speeds for those laps. Right? So our fast lap is represented in yellow. In this case, it's on the top at 90.8 miles an hour. And in this case up here, it's somewhere in the middle, 93.7, right? So as we drag along here, we can see how well our best lap is doing. Oh, look. Terrible. It's the slowest one going into the um, keyhole, which is over here, right? Watch right here. Remember, turn one, turn one, break, go 
if you turn one, get on the throttle, go all the way to the keyhole, brake, go through the keyhole, oh, look at the yellow, overbroke. Long, back straight, this is how to read data. A bunch of different things happen that we're going to look at. But the first thing we want to do is we're going to look at the variation. Remember, this is a uh, race lapse, which are very different than time trial lapse or HPD lapse can be. Um, usually, race lapse and in competitive racing um, don't have a lot of fast laps because they're battling. You know, some guy's on the inside. Some guy breaks before you do. You try to make a move to the outside. You take a different line. So we're, we're attempting to uh, learn something from this and see what's going on. And the very first thing I see is there's a lot of variation. Right here with laps that are three tenths apart, there's five miles an hour. And there is five miles an hour. And right there is massive because the red car breaks earlier and more and initially actually it's just earlier. They're all about the same slope, give or take. This one there's a little trailing off right there. Right there, right? Where we got through um, turn seven quickly. But what I'm seeing is a lot of variation that I wouldn't see uh, potentially if I just showed two laps which are right here. Yeah, we would see that and we would say, holy cow, what the heck's going on? These are his two fastest laps. And again, this is uh, more than likely race type data because this stuff doesn't happen like that. That's somebody getting in the way or you trying to make a pass. But my point is, when we add all of these together, we should have the elements of a... a uh, a very fast lap. So there's a couple. There's uh, there's six. Okay. So we want to tell a story um, about this. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this thing right here, which is totally badass. This is Delta. This is your best friend. And when we push that, here's what we see. We see that our best lap of uh, 275, this green lap, and we're going to change it, change the color of it black okay so what this means is, is this is the reference lap and every other color green blue yellow purple magenta are all these other colors right there are all these other colors and when the, that color the red color is below the fastest lap line it is said to be in this case 1.4 excuse me 0.14 seconds faster. Conversely, up here, the yellow lap is in this spot of the track five, almost a half a second slower. <clears throat> so we're quickly going to look like this, and we're going to try to understand what opportunity is there, and, and how did we get how did we get this lap? How did we uh, how much how much more room to go faster is there? Okay. So here's what we see. Whew, excuse me. So here's what we see, and I'll be kind of brief. I'm not going to do in-depth analysis. We see that all these lines, these other laps, are going this way, and all of a sudden they head down, and then they're straight. Does everybody see that? They kind of are doing their own thing right here, but this red one really is heading down, right? And it stays down. Well, at that point on the track right there, which is going down the kink of the back straight, the red lap is actually nine tenths faster than our reference lap, which is right here. So, if we could have just drove the black lap from here forward, the other half of the track, we would be one second or nine tenths of a second faster. Okay, but what happens? This red lap, who, who is now going the the lowest lap, is the fastest lap in here. And three of them, three of five of them, are below the reference lap. Except right now it's a little above. But if we would have just followed the advice right here, we would have been to turn 13 and we'd be nine tenths of a second faster. But something happens. All of these head up. And if all of these head up, they either all did terribly bad 
all five of them, or this reference lap did relatively better. We need to find out. So we're going to confirm this. So what we're going to do is find out if uh, all four of these, five of these laps, these colored laps, did amazingly well and saved nine tenths of a second, or was it this this reference lap that did shitty? Excuse my French. So we're going to grab these right here. We're going to go up there and push that, and we're going to look at those other laps and see what goes on. There's our black lap. Oh, look. Our black lap came through turn one. It was the slowest one right there by six miles an hour. It came in and it wasn't the fastest. It was in the middle. It broke the earliest and the most. Actually, the earliest. Actually, and the most. Which probably killed it on the run out of here. Right? Making all the others. This car parked it in the brake zone. This lap parked it in the brake zone. And overbroke. Right? By about five miles an hour. And got killed down the brake straight. Which is why, sports fans, all these got better compared to the black reference lap. Well, what about over here? This does the exact opposite, right? Everything's kind of the same right here. There's no gains. There's no losses. It's like there's some, some good things happen right here, and then it nets back down. So those are probably a, a black lap gain a little bit that was pretty nifty. But let's just look at these last parts, and then we'll call it quits on the software. So all these go up. So I'm going to I'm going to hypothesize that the black fast lap did something interesting from here to here, right? So let's look. Grab a little bit early. I'm going to grab that segment right there. Hey. So grab that again. Here we go. All right, third time's the charm. There we go. Hit this button. What is our friend Mr. Black Lap doing? He's coming through here, and he's got a lot of speed right here. You know what he does? See how he is rocking it? He freaking rocks. He rocks the carousel. And that's how he's up there. This guy's a little faster right there, but he's also down low. The reason he made up nine... Made up a whole second going into the carousel. Because um, he didn't make it on the way in. Right? This just says where he made a uh, uh, choice to uh, get on the brakes. This was much earlier. This was much earlier. He didn't break as much. Again, it's the black line. Carried that through here into entry. Seven miles an hour faster. Seven miles an hour faster. It actually, actually was the slowest corner speed right there, but he was in so fast, and he gets out pretty medium. So there's actually a uh, uh, time there uh, as well. So I imagine the theoretical is uh, is quite good. So there you go. There is a uh, one second savings um, by uh, by reducing the variety. Again, most likely a race-based situation. Um, so that takes him from a 137.2 through a 136.2. Let's look at the split times. Remember, that's just 137.2, 136.2. Look at that. Theoretical, 136.1. You're one-tenth away with, the, uh, with my uh, awesome analysis skills, or lack thereof. This is the rolling best, which is all put together. One lap that was all put together was a 36.5, just still real, uh, a real fantastic. So that is a quick lesson about track attack. Get an account, upload your data, um, let me know, and uh, I will per do one of these little uh, uh, videos for you. But uh, that's all I got. And again, I am NASA Eric, and 
get one of these free accounts, do it today, and upload your data. And I'll do a video and show you some things that are more entry level to, to uh, get you used to data acquisition. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to register for Autobahn. Excuse me. Don't forget to register for NCM in the end of the year banquet. See you.